I'll start off by just uh, saying to you, um, what are your main objectives um, for you right now? How do you turn the club's fortunes around? Seven defeats in the last nine, of course. How do you move the team up the table? James, good morning. How are you guys? All right? Um, Thanks. Yeah. Listen, first and foremost, um, I'm really privileged to be in this seat today. And uh, what I would say is that in a situation, the way you've just put it, I've been in these situations in the past in Germany. So um, I would like to reiterate that I've very much done a really hard uh, apprenticeship out there. So I've come in difficult moments where I've been involved with teams that have got to stay in the league, but also teams that have got to go for promotion. And also being at clubs that have got big uh, responsibilities in terms of their fans because they've got a big traditional fan base. So the main thing for me is what I always go back to is that I just concentrate and focus on what I can affect on the pitch. So it's about putting my game model into these guys and making sure that they're doing the things the way I see the game to be played. And we've got a lot of good young players here and a lot of good experienced players um, that could help the younger ones. So there's a real good dynamic in the group. What is that game model, Mark? Um, what, what are your principles? How do you want your team to play? And, and how important has been the experience in Germany and working with uh, Felix Magath? How has he helped shape that for you? Listen, um, of course, uh, I'm a guy who wants to get as many offensive players on the pitch as possible. Um, and I like to attack and I like to play with freedom in the last third. However, I like to build a real scaffolding in the back where I've got a security there and a good base that um, we're strong and we're solid, you know. So I've got a bit of both, you know. I'm a big student of the Italian football, so I really enjoy the way they go and work against the ball. Um, but I also like different countries like Spain, where they like to combinate well in the last third. And of course, I want to bring that Scottish uh, UK spirit to the team. You know, because it's important to me that the team reflects us as a club and we need to get that real terrier spirit into them, you know. Absolutely. And, and you mentioned about uh, young players as well, bringing through young players. But in the championship, it's, it's a tough division, uh, as you know, and you need that know-how, especially, um, to win matches. How important is that going to be as well, that that blend, that mixture of the both things? Yeah, very important. Um, we've always tried to do that, the clubs have been at, is to build a good uh, base with the older players that the young ones could always lean on them. But I just love young players, guys. I love their fear fearlessness. I love that they just go out there and express themselves on the pitch and they want to show the fans of our club how good they are and how, how much quality they have. So it's very important for me and us as a club that we concentrate on our young ones and we develop them so that they become important players in the team and the squad. Great. And, and a big test this weekend. You've got, you got Reading uh, third in the table. Uh, how have you been preparing for that one? Yeah, we've had uh, five sessions in three days. So the guys have worked really hard. Um, uh, we've done a, a lot of good work on the pitch. And the big thing for me is that the players have showed a real good commitment uh, to the training because there's been sessions in there that have been very intensive, um, as you would expect. Um, but the guys have took it on board and they've given me everything, and they look very focused. Right, and can I can I ask you about that experience working with her to Berlin? Uh, obviously, it was a uh, it went down to a playoff, didn't it, to 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 keep the club up? What was that experience like for you, and and how much of that, in terms of that spirit, uh, in terms of that um, just bringing people together? Yeah, I suppose. How much? How important was that in terms of what you're going to now try and translate? as head coach here at Huddersfield? To be, to be honest with you, Hertha Berlin means so much to me as a club. And it's the same with all the clubs I've worked with out there. Um, Freiburg, Hertha Berlin, and especially Ingolstadt, they mean so much to me. Um, and this is what I want to create a Huddersfield town as well. I want the town to be right behind us. I want the fans to be there every week and proud to watch their team so they've got a real clarity in everything they're doing um, and we'll have to have an identity we'll have to be clear on what we want to be as a team and of course I've mentioned that we push the young players as well and that was something that we did at Hertha in a tough situation we pushed the young players because we know the young players they play without fear um, and they did excellent for us 
but of course it's a it's a great experience you know every experience is good because you can learn from the positives and the negatives um and that's very much why i wanted to go out there james because i wanted to challenge myself um to learn the language to learn the culture to learn about other cultures that are coming into the club i.e south american players players from france everything like that and um I took my family out there with us as well. I've got three young boys. One's eight, one's five, and one's just a baby one. And the oldest boy, he speaks German probably better than me, to be honest with you. Um, but uh, as I said, I'm I'm really excited to bring uh, the three boys down to England now. And they're always on the phone at the moment asking for Huddersfield Town shirts and asking me about the players. The, vo the oldest one's already been on the internet, uh, checking what players there are and the guys that you like and stuff. So it's very exciting for us as a family. And as I said, I'm really proud to be here. That's great. Great, Mark. Um, last question for me, actually. Um, any absences, any players missing uh, for the game this weekend? No, I think we're, we're fine, to be honest with you. Obviously, you know, depending on training today, you're taking into account how they, how they woke up in the morning. You know, maybe some of them didn't get a good sleep or they've... There have been a, a few bugs of recent due to uh, the change in the weather, probably, but I think we're pretty much like a, a clear bow. So I'm really looking forward to seeing the group today out there on the training pitch. That's the best part. Everything for me, and you'll hear me tell you all the time, it's just it's about the training. It's about what we do. And that's my focus, guys. Right. Thanks so much, Mark. Cheers, James. Right, Lou, we're going to salute it from BC Radio Leeds. Lou, can I give you that, mate? Now it's yeah, working. Of course. Thank you. Cheers. Mark, good to meet you. Um, I guess we'll start with when did you learn of Huddersfield Town's interest and, and why Huddersfield Town is the right move for you? Yeah, there was contact from my representatives and Lee um, and then it just accelerated really fast and it was definitely something that I was interested to do. I explained the other day that I made a deal with, with myself as a coach when I moved into coaching and I wanted to work in the Bundesliga. And I've done that now. And the second deal for me is to work in the Premiership. I'm obsessed about it. It's everything I think about and it's where I want to go. And I feel this club's the perfect fit for me because they're set up to go there. Um, of course, we can't get ahead of ourselves because we've got a young group. Um, but we've also got experienced players in there who have been at that level and they know what it's about. And the club's also been there as well. So they know and I've had a taste of it. And I love that there's no excuses here. The club is fully staffed. They've got a fantastic youth academy here. I mean, I've been so impressed with that of the recent days. The quality that's been on show from the young players, not only the guys that are about the group, but the guys that are coming up from um, the youth teams as well to supplement us. They've been absolutely fantastic. Um, and I've really enjoyed working with the young lads as well. I guess then further to that is why did you feel personally for you it was the right time to step up from a number two into a number one role? Um, it's be, it was great because the way I was transitioning with Thomas Oral and uh, Felix Maga was very much that um, they were basically giving me full responsibility for uh, training and, and, and organising things and, and working with the staff below the staff. So it was something that I felt was going to be a natural progression for me, you know. And as I said, that's why I went there to do my apprenticeship so that when my chance come, and I have, obviously, in football, you have difficult periods and adversity. And I feel that I've got so much experiences to lean on now. And I just want to give these young players that type of experience that I've got and just let them feel good about their side at the club and, and go and get wins. Because when we are winning games, I know what this stadium's like. I used to watch the games here when uh, well, the club was in the Premiership and the atmosphere was incredible. You mentioned that they were recently in the top flight and they came so close to returning last season. So there's clearly a foundation already at the club for them to build onto that. Aim. Yeah, of course. I mean, you, you you all know, guys, it's difficult when you, you deal with a loss in the playoff. Um, and I explained that to the players the other day as well, that if we went playoffs this season, it would be my fifth consecutive playoff final in five years. So I'm used to that. And I've dealt also with... Uh, how can I say, disappointment, but also the success. And there's no better feeling when you get the success. So you have to keep your focus. And you can't look too far ahead, ahead of yourself. And you've got to focus really what you're doing in the training on a daily basis, and, and you'll get the rewards from it. You went into 
Hertha, as we know, and, and kept them up, albeit a lot later in the season than what you've come into Huddersfield Town. C can you draw any comparisons on that experience? Yeah, of course. Look, Hertha means a lot to me. You know, I've made that clear. The club was fantastic. I really enjoyed to work with the players there. And what I do is when I come in these clubs, I really build close relationships with players. Um, I don't know why, because it's not... It's maybe unusual to see like a uh, Prince Boatang or a Boyata or a, a Scassi Bar in Argentina and a Toussaint, a French guy, coming close to a Scotsman. But for whatever reason, it just seems to happen. And I've already started to build my relationships with our lads and uh, they've impressed us so far. Uh, but like I said, we've got a lot of work to do. You know, we are in the, the area and the table that we're sitting at the moment is... Uh, is a, is, a, is a situation that we'll find ourselves in. But I'm looking to be positive with the group and uh, just keep building the relationship so that they're feeling good in their game and ready to go and win games. You mentioned that you've only had five sessions since coming in, but how do you feel the players have taken to you in this short space of time, Mark? Yeah, I mean, that's probably why I'm a bit hoarse today because mm -hmm. we had five sessions in uh, three days, you know, and I've really enjoyed it. I mean... The worst thing is when you're out of football is that you're missing the training pitch so much. Um, and the big thing for me is it's all about the training. It's all about being out there on the pitch with the guys. I always say it's the best job in the world, you know. Um, so I'm looking forward to building these relationships with these players. And I think I've engaged well with them and the staff's definitely engaged well with them because they're already uh, in the building and they know a lot about the players as well, which is great for me. You mentioned your young players and your passion for developing youth, but here at Huddersfield Town, there's a good crop of experienced players. I'm thinking you, Jordan Rhodes, your Tom Lees, Matty Pearson, Jonathan Hogg. Have you managed to speak to that senior group yet? And if so, you as, as a new manager, how vital are they going to be to your development? Yeah, it's been vital at any of the clubs. I've been in it. I always talk about my five or six captains, you know, the, the older experienced ones, but... What I would say is that I like young players that have got an opinion as well. And I, I like an environment where young players could speak their mind because I want to create discipline and respect. And we all have to respect each other. So I respect the players. That are, the players will respect my staff and they'll obviously give me the respect, which is important. Um, but it's not a case of the old players. They'll have the final say. The young lads, if they're producing on the pitch, they could also have uh, their opinion, which is important for me. But they're very much what I say, the scaffolding and the structure from the, 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 the team. Um, and they give you that base to go from, you know. During your playing career and your, your early coaching career, were there any managers that you looked to and thought, one day I want to emulate them? Yeah, and listen, of course you take the good things and the bad things from all the managers, you know. Um, what I would say is that in Berlin, people kept uh, trying to say it was like a newer version of Felix Maga. What I would like to say is, and, and I'm really privileged to have a situation to do this and put the record straight, there will never be another Felix Maga. Felix Maga is an incredible manager. He's one of the best managers the world's ever seen. And to do what he's done with the clubs he's been at, to take Wolfsburg to go and win the league, is incredible. All I could do is one thing, is to be Mark Fallenham. And uh, I want these guys to see how genuine I am as a person and uh, they'll know exactly what I, I want from my team because I'm very clear in how I want my team to play. And we just need to build that and layer it in the coming weeks. Just lastly from me, trip to uh, Reading to start things off for you. They've had quite a decent start to the season compared to what they, they had last season. What have you managed to make of them so far this week? Yeah, of course. I mean, like, I mean, we all know it's a tough league um, and we analysed the uh, opposition teams and stuff as well. So... I'm really looking forward to going down there to Reading. Um, and I think we'll go there and we'll play on the front foot and uh, I'm sure we'll get a good result. Best of luck, Prep. Thanks, Mark. Thank Thanks. you. We're going to come to Dan from TalkSport. Dan, good morning. Very good morning, Mark. Lovely to see you. Sorry if it's it's like repeating over, over ground you just covered. I mean, it's it's some opportunity for you, but it's high stakes, isn't it? This challenge for you. I, I guess the need to hit the ground running with Huddersfield starting right now is is what is at the forefront of your mind. Yeah, just the same at Hertha Berlin. Dan. If you lost the first game, you could have just packed your bags and went home. <laughs> and you had six to eight thousand fans there, you know. And it was the same at Ingolstadt. Ingolstadt's the Audi club, so they're backed by the most powerful company in Germany. And as I said, we we just try to 
focus on the pitch, focus on the players and the training on a daily basis. And we went there and had a great season when we got promoted. I think we broke Hasenhutl's record with the 72 points in the calendar season. So it was a great, and I really loved it, you know. I love working with the players and we created a family environment. And you know what it's like in family environments. Sometimes you could have your tiffs and your fallouts, but the next day you've just got to put it to bed and, and go and focus on the target and the task in hand. And that's what I've been doing here, you know, just focusing on the training and uh, trying to get an overview of the team and the squad and uh, being impressed so far. Those those different cultures you've experienced, a lot of your recent coaching work in Germany, different ways, I guess, that the guys over there would approach obstacles you face. Do you feel you can, that sets you on the right path, coming to Huddersfield, returning to England to work, everything that's expected of you here? Yeah, I mean, the guys in Germany were probably sick listening to me at times because I always talked about the championship, having been a player there, to tell them how relentless it was with the amount of games and the volume of games. Also talk a lot about Glasgow Celtic because we're families a big uh, Celtic base. And I just feel that um, sometimes the German uh, league and the players there and that, they kind of dismiss us a little bit in the UK. So I want to bring a real German style to Huddersfield. Um, but I also want to put that British fighting spirit into the team. Um, because, as I said, the people here are Yorkshire people and they have to identify with their club. They've got to see hard work, endeavour, sweat on that pitch. Players that are going to roll their sleeves up and fight for the cause. The club won just before the international break, Mark. It was it was timely success, important success. Um, the way football management works, I suppose, is you get a job because the person before you was struggling and, and got fired. And because of that, I guess there's work to do to reinvigorate players, to instill belief. Is it about you in these opening few days? It's been about lifting people up? Yeah, that's... That's the great point you made. That's the nature of the business. I mean, when we arrived in Hertha Berlin, we actually arrived in the hotel. Me, Felix and Werner Leuthard, he's right-hand man, the fitness uh, expert. And uh, we actually arrived in the hotel in Berlin and the previous staff were actually leaving the rooms. So this is the nature of the business and that's an unfortunate thing. But as I said, everyone gets herself in a situation where they, they, they become a good chance to do well. And this is a great platform for me. What I would say, and I need to focus and, and reiterate this, I've got so much good support here from the chairman and his wife right down to the people who are the dinner uh, ladies or the, the ladies that clean the building, you know. Everybody's so friendly and they want to do well. So you already get that family feel and it makes me feel good about working at the club. Um, but again, guys, the most important thing for me it's just a focus on the pitch, what we're doing on a daily basis, you know. We've had five good sessions in uh, three days, and I'm really looking forward to today's session as well and to travel down to Redden with a good feeling. From me, Mark, good to speak with you. What can Huddersfield expect from your side? What are your what, the, what can the fans expect? What are your non-negotiables? And I guess there's always about that, OK, what are we going to do to convince everyone that I'm absolutely the right guy to lead Huddersfield forward long yeah. term? I'm not here to convince anybody that. I've already done my apprenticeship in Germany. I'm just here to show show the, the team how to do their movements when we're in possession and what we're going to be as a team when we're not uh, in possession. You know? And as I've touched on before, I want to bring a really offensive spiel, uh, game in. So I want to get many players in the game that are offensive, creative players. And I like players that have got a lot of power in their legs. You know? So as... We're sitting here and you think about the group we've got. We've got young, dynamic players and we've got older ones that are very fit. And that's all, uh, like, I could only compliment the staff here as well because they've got them in fantastic shape and they really work together as a group to make sure the players are in that good shape so that they're physically ready to play this volume of games we'll have in this league. Thank you for your time and go well tomorrow. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Stephen, you can do it in German if you want. Stephen. Ah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Since you... I don't know. Hi Mark, I, I, I'm sure you've watched sort of the previous games and, and how Town have done so far this season. What do you think are sort of the priorities um, over the next few weeks? Yeah, look, um, I was really impressed from the weekend's game, you know. Um, 
the young players played without fear and there was a real togetherness about the group. And the big thing for me that what I noticed was the team spirit. There was a great team spirit and it's not always the case when a team's sitting down there at the bottom of the table. But I just want to let the fans know that we're going to be a really hard-working team. Everybody's going to work hard for each other out there and we're going to be demanding the guys day in, day out. And there'll be a lot of stress put on them in the training so that when they come into the games, they could handle the stress. And this is something I made clear to Lee Bromby and the chairman. The guys will be getting stressed. I'm not here to be their friend. I'm here to win games. Do you feel like this is a group that's going to respond well to that? Yeah, they've already responded, you know. Um, and that's why I'm hoarse, because I probably got too overexcited in the, in the first few days. Um, and I've just enjoyed working with them. They've gave me a great feeling. So we're very focused and concentrated on the game at the weekend. Do you feel like you've got the squad you need to sort of pull out of the, the bottom three and start moving up the table? As you said, that's just going to be something we assess as we go, you know. The main thing for me is to concentrate on the, the training and uh, give them the stress so that they're used to it in the games and also give them a good feeling about their game. And we'll, when we travel down here at the weekend, my feeling is that we're in, we're in a good way, you know. Do you have an idea in mind of what sort of shape you might want to play both now and in the longer term? Yeah, I've got a clear idea in my head. Um, what I would say is that I want to be flexible in many systems and many formations, very much the way it is in Germany, you know, week in, week out, you're playing against so many different systems, teams that are tactically astute. Um, so I want to bring that intelligence, the game intelligence into this group um, and just share my experiences with, with them, you know. But again, guys, it's about us. It's about the clarity that we've got in our game. And we just need to keep building it and progressing as a group. I think some supporters, we've had sort of mixed experience here at Huddersfield with um, people taking their first head coach jobs. Um, do you feel you're, you're ready to, to step into this role? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. You know, um, it was a natural progression for us. I was probably uh, feeling like I was really... Yeah, I would say probably, I would say a couple of years before actually I was feeling I was ready, you know, but as I said, I think with young coaches, sometimes what they do is they just rush into things. And I really wanted to focus on that apprenticeship out there and challenge myself, but not, not only challenge me, I wanted to challenge my family as well, to see how they handled the, handled the adversity and the pressures of being involved at big clubs, you know, and living in big cities. And when I come into this town, I just get a great feeling with everybody, you know, wherever you walk around the town and that, the people are so welcoming, welcoming and they're also explaining to you how much they care about their club. And so we want to create a group that create, cares about their club and goes out and shows that on the pitch. You've inherited the backroom staff that was already here. Is it useful to have a, a group of staff that, that know the club and know the players inside out already? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the staff here, they know the club inside out, which is great. So you're always going to get the little secrets and stuff, um, of course. But the main thing for me as well is to send a clear message out to England that I'm not a guy that wants to come in here with six coaches and four masseuses and all that. I'm just a guy that goes into clubs and builds relationships with people. And, to, and my job is to get the best out of our staff and to get the best out of our players. And I think I've got the confidence to make that happen, you know. One of those key relationships is going to be with Lee Bromby. I'm sure you spoke to him a lot in your um, in your interview phase when you were looking at the job. It, how do you see that relationship going forward? I'll just tell you right now here, yeah, Lee's going to be sport director of the Premiership Clubs in the future. No doubt about it. So we'll put the cards on the table. He's different class. His attention to details is incredible. And what I like about it is when I look in his eyes, he stares me in the eyes and he's got intensity. You know why? because he cares about this club and he cares about the owners. The owners are phenomenal people. The first thing I did when I met Dean and, and his wife, Janet, is when I come away from the meeting, I said to myself, I'm going to give them everything, everything I've got, because they care so passionately about this club. And I've got a guy like Lee there who's got the same idea as me, me and he's going to drive this message throughout the club. And we've got to do it with aggression and intensity because you're not going to get up out of this league for being nice people, you know. What do you see as your mission for this season? Is it just stay up? Is it mid-table? Is it 
Yeah, it's a good, uh, listen, it's a good question. Everybody's excited to know, you know. And as I said, I've been in situations where I've inherited teams that are going to try and stay in the league. Like I talk about pack your bag on the first day and go home if you lose the first game. I've actually lived in brief day situations. And also I've been in situations where you're the favourite every week and you've got to go out not only win games, but win well. Because if you're not winning well and high scoring, then people are not satisfied, you know. And that's what Audi was about. That's what Ingolstadt's about. So for me, really, guys, just going back to it again, focus on what we're doing on a daily basis, focus on game to game and progress together as a group and create a good family team spirit that we're all working towards one goal, and that is to win games. It's a very busy run of fixtures now up to the World Cup break uh, and some really tough away games in there as well. You've not got a win away from home. Tomorrow's a good chance to try and get some points on the board there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, you know, like uh, I had this also with the COVID period at Ingolstadt and it was great. You know what it's like, guys? It actually gives you that feeling like a tournament feel because you're constantly playing, recovering, getting the detail into the, the, the team and then you're going away again. And if you win or you lose, you're always focused on the next game and it's going to come fast so you could give the fans a great feeling. But what I would say with the fans is that I appreciate that they're all travelling down there on uh, Saturday to Reading. It's a long journey, so I wish them a safe journey. But I'm going to need them. This team's going to need them. So see from the start, I need the, need the, these guys to get behind us. And I know they will because I've seen that on Saturday as well. It was a brilliant turnout um, for a team that's sitting low on the table. And they got behind the team from the minute go. So when I drove up to Scotland, I was saying to myself, this place is going to be incredible when they go on a run of games at home. And we did witness that in the Premier League. And obviously it was the same situation last season on the run-up to the playoff final. You know, the fans got right behind the team. It's going to be a great experience for us all. Keen to repay those fans then, I suppose, and uh, try and get them, you know, back behind the team after a difficult start to the season. Yeah. You know what really impresses me about them as well? The people here, the fans, they've got a real understanding of the game. And that's probably down to having a German manager before as well and different styles and types of managers, you know. So they show real patience and they know that it does not happen overnight and it takes time to build. So that's very much going to be my focus is that we're in a situation where we build it together. But it's all about them. They're the club. They're the, they're the people that pay to watch us. And we want them to be proud of what we're putting out there on the pitch. Great stuff. Best of luck, Mark. Hiya, Mark. OK, I, I was just wondering, this looked at Huddersfield a few years ago with the German manager and the style of football, the play and the togetherness. Have you sort of followed the fortunes and sort of thought, well, maybe one day it might be the sort of club I'd, I'd like to come to? Yeah, of course, I've looked at the club from the outset. You know, that was natural when you've seen uh, Wagner was here and he was amazing and he's got his place in the history of this club. And uh, like I said, I'm not trying to come here and emulate anybody. I want to be myself. You know, like, I've been out in Bundesliga and been successful now. It's about now being successful in the Championship. And I'm very clear on what I want to do. And again, just to point out, the team's got to have clarity. They've got to show an identity. So when you guys are sitting up there, you will say it's so clear on how they go about their business. But as I said, it'll take time, you know. And because we've got a lot of running games, we're going to be able to build it and layer it as we go. It seems like it'll be hard work on the training ground. Long hours, but... Pretty enjoyable as well, maybe. It's got to be enjoyable, yeah, but it's going to be intense. And like I keep saying, I'm not their friend. I'm here to work them, to make them better. I'm a guy that wants these players to be sitting in a year or two years' time playing in the Premier League, whether it's with Huddersfield Town or whether it's with the big clubs in England. And that's what I, I was always building relationships with my guys in Germany, the young players. I want them to do well for their families. And that's why when I signed here, my phone blew up and exploded with all the young German players because they're proud for me, but I'm also proud for them. that they're now sitting playing at the Hamburgs or the Berlins and teams like that because they've worked so hard to get there, guys. You want players to challenge you, ask questions and live, breathe Huddersfield Town 24-7? Yeah, of course, that's it. And uh, we'll build that as we go. Yeah. You, you mentioned about your, you know, your working-class background, your father was a scaffolder, that's... Gives you real perspective in your in your life, and um, yeah, I suppose it's... yeah. Listen, m my father's a scaffolder, and my, my big brother is as well. 
and the both of them have got uh, their own business and uh, they've got workers up there and the guys are all really proud that I'm obviously in this situation. But they've always supported us uh, wherever I've went with the football, you know, from a young age. Um, my mum's a, a, a wee woman, a wee Scottish lady. She works in Nine Wells Hospital in the laundry. Um, so um, she gets embarrassed at times when the people talk to her about her son and the football and all that because she's a very humble lady, you know, and that's the type of family that I come from. It's not about us. And that's what I want to say to you as well here. It's not about Matt Fallingham. It's about these players. These players are going to be the guys that get us to where we want to go. Yeah. Have you ever helped out at all? With Have you sort of seen it on the other side almost? Yeah, of course. I mean, when I'm in and out of the football, I always go in and be around them and help them. And to be honest, my, my dad and my brother just argue like typical families. <laughs> Day and night, we all know how it goes. Um, and people always say, why is your old, your old fella so relaxed with you? And I said, oh, that's because I'm the special one. And I always joke, but we know what family's like. And that's what it's going to be like here as well. We're going to have where we fall and all that. But it's all about the task in hand. And, and the target, and we know what our target is, and that's to win games. I mean, it seems like you know, the, the family are all in on this journey, and um, you want all the Huddersfield town fans to be all in. Yeah, yeah of course. I'm going to be about this place. You're, you're not going to get rid of me here. So you're going to see is whether I'm going and taking my three sons for a McDonald's, and you say, oh, there's Mark there. That's just the way it's going to be. I want to uh, immerse myself into the town, you know, and, and be about the people because. It's important that they identify with me. Uh, I don't know if you know, like me, Felix and Werner, out in Berlin, we used to cycle in every day to training. Um, so I've asked Lee to try and order us a bike because I'm, I know it's only, a, it's not too big a town. So uh, I could do with maybe losing a kilo or two as well. So it would be great to just come in and cycle in some mornings and stuff like that as well. That's very much the type of, Person that I am, you know. And you've obviously you're playing career and you're coaching. You've stepped outside your comfort zone. You've really relished every experience, and, you know, life experience as well, isn't it? I always just try to tell the players, and I know this myself that you this is the best job in the world. You know, it's, it's, there is no ifs or buts. It is the best job, and uh, what I th feel with this group is they all appreciate it so much, and you could see that they're utilising the staff here and they're using everything that's on offer here at the training centre, because the training centre is like a paradise, you know. Um, for me, it's probably one of the, the best training grounds um, in England at the moment, and uh, it's all credit to uh, Dean and Janet for putting their effort and their, uh, their passion into this club. Thank you. Come to Chris in the room, Matthew. Hi, Mark. Conscious of time, so I won't keep you long. Just a few questions, mate. Um, you're clearly a man who likes a challenge, you know, moving to Germany at a young age. You spoke about um, being an assistant in front of 68,000 in Germany, but this is a completely different challenge, isn't it? Being the main man, being the head coach. How are you going to face this one? Listen, it's a challenge. There's no two ways about it, you know. I know uh, what's expected of me and... Uh, I could see that when I speak to Dean and, and Lee, you know, they've got a real intensive look in their eye and they want to do well. So I'm really focused on the task in hand. What is it about Germany that's such a good grounding for, at the moment, not just for players, but clearly for, for coaches as well from this country? Well, you know, you, when you look at, at the league from the, the outset, you could see that they're very tactically strong, but they're very physical players as well. And that's why I like the league, because it's quite similar to the championship and the premiership that they play with a lot. I always say the players have got a lot of power in their legs. So I enjoy working in that type of football. Um, and as I said, it's about me taking the experiences and bringing it into Huddersfield Town. You say you, you're taking things from Spain, from Germany, from various different countries. Would you liken your style to any one in particular or any team in particular or any style? Not at all. You know, I just try to take a little bit from everyone, you know, obviously working with Thomas Oral, he's a fantastic coach who's brought teams from the fifth division right up to Bundesliga 2, which is incredible. And not only doing that, being a fantastic person, but doing that, not being a big name or a, a big name player in the past. So I've actually been in around a person like that and I've seen how much experience he's got. And he was a very astute guy. He was always going down to Italy to watch uh, the teams or traveling over to watch Atletico and things like that. 
So you're just constantly gaining experiences from these people. But also, I'm a guy that likes to create sessions. So I would come in and bring, bring sessions and create sessions into that type of training methodology. So the people would say, you're very creative in what you do. And like I said, I want a team that's going to be creative in the, the, the final third, but also playing with clear ideas. Finally, Mark, you said you, your family is Celtic. How do they feel about you wearing blue? Yeah, well, you know, it's funny. Every It seems to be every club I go at recently wears blue. So straight away, the Scottish guys have been giving us a bit of stick for it. But I'm used to it because obviously now, and then it hurt to Berlin, and also one of my favourite clubs I played well out in Famagusta. Um, very passionate club out there as well. It was probably the favourite club I've ever played for. Um, I love that club. And like I said, I always try to build relationships with these people. So straight away when I seen this light blue, I was saying that's going to be perfect for me. Good luck. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Nice. Thank you. Welcome to Alpi from Football World in the middle. Hi, Alfie. Morning, Mark. How are you doing? Morning, Pa. How are you doing? Waiting patiently there. You were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, just a couple of quick ones from me. Um, I noticed in your, in your initial interview with, with the club's website, you spoke about wanting that quality and creativity. In, in the final third, you must be excited to work with some of the options that you've got here. Jack Rodone, Tino Angerin, Sauber Thomas, even even somebody like young Pat Jones. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what I like about them as well is that they're young, so they're going to develop and they're going to progress with the work that we're putting on in the training pitch. And also what I like about two or three of them as well is that they're guys that have come from nowhere, you know? So they're a real, like... Uh, there's no one expectancy on them from people in the, the league and they don't do they don't know too much about them. So that's a great thing for us that we could like uh I always talk about it guys, right? I tell the young boys, let the hand break off. Don't hold back. Every time in training, just play on the full throttle. You know, it's the only way to play. It's like when you were a young guy at the school and you put the ball out, the guys just play, they play without fear. So that's very much how I want my team to play. Um, and I'm trying to create that there in the last few days. And I was so impressed with the commitment and the desire from the guys in the training. And that was important for me to see that with my own eyes. And someone like Sorba Thomas was so important last season. And obviously, he's, he's maybe not hit those heights at the start of this season. He's been away with Wales. Do you think that that break's done him good? And how's he been in and around the camp since he's come back in? I could only see what um, I, I've seen with my own eyes. And... Sorba is going to be massive for me. That's it. Yeah, and finally, from me, you've, you've spoken about the young players. There's obviously some really impressive options, you know, that you could potentially lean on from from the B team at yeah. Huddersfield. You know, how are you going to utilise them? You know, yeah. I'm, def I'm definitely going to do that. I'm going to be using uh, a lot of the young players in the training, uh, depending on their schedule as well, because. I want them to come up with the eye of the tiger and what I always talk about, that fire in their belly, that they could show me what they could bring. And because we know it's a long season, guys, there's a massive volume of games in the championship. So they're going to be able to come in and get their chance. But I need them to be physically ready, tactically ready and get better technically. So that's what the training methodology is all about, really. Brilliant. That's it from me, Mark. Best of luck this weekend. Thank you very much, Bob.